Okay, directors. Um, so we, uh, me and Nikki were talking the other day and we were talking about how to get your business automated. Um, so I just attended a training at home office and although it was like the third time I attended the same training, this was new, so there's always more for us to learn. And they were basically talking about, you know, as directors and above, we really need to get in the habit of getting our business automated where, you know, we always know we'll get the bookings if we need to we'll find some recruits. Um, we, we have a system for customer care. We have a system for follow up because until our business is automated, we, you know, we can't really focus our attention on other people and help them because if we do, right, if all of a sudden we give these new exciting people um, all this time, then what happens is our personal business dwindles down, right? And um, if I can tell you one thing is your personal business always comes first because you're the leader, you're setting the pace, and you're leading by example. And if you don't have a personal business, then you're not you're not growing, right? You're not doing the things that your team expects you to do. Um, so we were talking about you know the automated business, and then Nikki was like. Well, help. <laughs> how do we how do we get our business automated? And I think sometimes what you know one of the struggles I have is um, to be duplicatable. So I think of things and I think that it's normal and that everybody does them. And then people are like, no, nobody else does this. Um, so you know, hopefully between my experience um, and you guys as you know new experienced directors, um, I figured maybe we can, you know, come up with something, some kind of plan that um, will work for the people that work full time, do this as a side gig. Um, so it's more automated, I think. Um, and that, you know, will be hopefully helpful. So anyone else want to share on what they kind of think around this topic? I'm going to see if I can pull up that picture and put it in here. What are you guys thinking when I think when I say um, automate your business? I'm just gonna go find a picture that I took at that training. I am feeling the I'm focusing so much on others in my team to make them successful that what I would normally do is falling behind. You know, I forgot to send out a host packet last week, and like that does I don't do that. So, um, I, it's just trying to figure out how to balance it and how to make it a little bit easier on me so that it's not so overwhelming because if if director is overwhelming then what's advanced director going to be like right and, um, unless we have the systems in place right 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 so that's where i'm at i want this so that i can continue to grow because if i don't have this figured out i don't feel like i can grow yeah and and that's actually very smart because you know, sometimes we grow and then we kind of figure things out along the way. So for you to, for you to think that far ahead um, is actually pretty good. Um, so I, I did, um, I don't know if you guys saw this or if the email already went out, but Pamper Chef is doing a um, new director experience, like for new promotes. And one of the things, it's called Rise to Success, and I had to record a video for one of the parts. Um, but a new thing that I learned, right, because we're always like, oh, I don't have balance. I need balance in life, right? Um, and they basically tell you balance doesn't exist. <laughs> They're like, you know, have you ever tried to balance something, right? Does it work or does it, it only works for so long, right? Eventually, things are kind of going to collapse. So um, what they used, the word that they used was harmony. So they're like, you know, it's just having harmony of things. Sometimes one thing gets more attention than the other. And sometimes the other thing gets more attention than the other one. And I was like, hmm, okay. You know, um, I never thought of it that way. So that was kind of Kind of interesting so um any what else want to share i'm trying to get this picture in here and i can't figure it out it's driving me crazy i think nikki's right and i found myself doing that is um since i've been director you know i was focusing on others and forgetting about myself and it's not hard to do i mean you're working so much to get them to where they need to be and what, last month I talked to Claudia and I said, you know what, I need to take the step back and I need to 
be sure that my business is stable because if without it, I have no base, you know, I can only help them so much, but then they're watching me too and going, Oh, well, she's not doing this. So it's okay for me not to do this. So I'm trying to set up, like Claudia said, these systems and this couldn't have come at a better time for me and all of us, you know? So definitely getting back to the things that worked at the beginning for me. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. I mean, your team watches you, whether you believe it or not. Like if I go on vacation, the whole bullet train is on vacation. All right. <laughs> um, so it's just, you know, again, the leader sets the pace and your, your team is a reflection of you, whether you believe it or not, it's the truth. Right. Um, so, so, okay. So does anyone, um, so first of all, let me, now I finally got the picture in here. So I'll share that checklist. I don't know. I just want to take notes as we talk. Um, so when they were talking about autopiloting your personal business, um, they're talking about bookings, host coaching, um, you know, having a good show and selling skills, recruiting and customer care. So why don't we, um, you know, maybe start with some of the easier things as far as, um, I don't know what are so if I just look at those po bullet points, what are some things in that area that you think you already have automated? Does anyone have anything? So for me, for booking, I feel like like I can I can control that for myself to some degree. Like I, my bookings are my responsibility, and I can handle those. So um, on the thirtieth of every month, I started doing my um, birthday sit outs for the next month. So on the 30th, I look at who has birthdays for April and I send out messages to them. And then, um, I don't know, I usually like a week or two into the month, if my calendar isn't full, that's when I go through and I, I put up four seeds, I guess the organic booking, not bookings from a show, but if, if I didn't get my two from my last show, then I'm going to work to get those then. But um, like my one thing that I know I do is the 30th of every month, I'm sending out the birthday messages. Okay. So I guess, you know, as far as bookings is concerned, is first of all, knowing what you want. Like, what's the minimum that you guys need to have every single month so the bills get paid? Right. So I have a minimum for me personally of stuff that has to go in by the 15th. So I have a paycheck on the 21st. Right. Um, so first of all, knowing, right, knowing what it is, knowing how many shows do you want? Because you can't have it automated if it fluctuates. Right. Uh, your business can't be duplicatable if it varies, you know, two shows one month, eight shows the next month, and two shows the month after, right? We, if we want consistency, it should be somehow consistent as well. So first of all, knowing what it is that you want is probably, I, and again, this is just popping up in my head, but I think, right, is this true, right? Knowing what we want, first of all, so we know what we are going after every month. That's what I was saying. Like for me, if I don't have my eight shows by that second week of the month, I'm sending out messages to people who've never even been to one of my shows to make sure that I can fill my calendar with the eight shows that I want. Right. Um, yeah. So, okay. So knowing what it is that we want, knowing how many shows we want and when those shows will be right. So if you are all virtual, Am I doing one party a week? Am I doing two parties a week? Am I doing six parties every other week? Am I doing four parties a week, right? So for me, um, if you want to be, I think if you want to be a successful virtual only consultants, I would go with at least four a week. Um, if you're still doing cooking shows, you could probably do less, but it depends on your goals. I don't know, right? If you want to earn the trip faster or grow faster, then you have more shows. So for me personally, um, I want four virtual parties every week. And if I look at a week, like right now I'm looking on the 26th and there's one, I like feel like, Ooh, like I need to go and get that filled or it's going to like hurt me because I know that not all four are probably going to qualify. Right. Um, so knowing what it is that you want and when those shows are going to be. So if you're doing cooking shows, 
right? I know some of you have a schedule that kind of switches every month or whatever, every week, but then still knowing, okay, I want four or I want six. And when are they going to be, right? Um, so I can't share my screen, but I basically, um, you know, I use Google Calendar, but what I do as a visual for me is, um, maybe I can share it. I kind of saw it in the video today that Casey snuck off on me. Um, so I have these dry erase calendars. So they're three months, right? So right now they're March, April, and May. Oh, I didn't write made on that one. So I highlight with green when my cooking show, state, show dates are. So they're every Thursday and Friday, and then they rotate every other Wednesday according to my husband's schedule. And then on the Monday um, is, you know, if you look up there, it looks a little crazy. On the Monday, um, I have my four vertical parties. And I write the names in on there as soon as they book. Now I do I still put that in my Google Calendar or you can put it in your paper calendar, but I, I for me it's like sitting here and looking at this makes me nauseous when it's empty. <laughs> right? So it's just having that visual in front of you. It's probably kind of like that um calendar that you Nikki put out to your team, right? When it's empty, it's kind of like, ugh, right? But as they're starting to fill it, you like to look at it. <laughs> right. Um so I think having some kind of um, visual calendar or something that keeps you in, it in front of you. The other thing I've heard too is um, make eight host packets for, for make eight April host packets right now. And until those are out of the door, right, you keep them in front of you and you're looking at them like all the time. And you're like, oh, right. So anything else that you guys do in that department, like to help with that? Okay, does that seem automated as far as bookings goes? What else could we add to make bookings automated? So I'm thinking along the lines of making sure we get two, two or three bookings from every party. So, you know, if you, we always say we wanna get two bookings from every party. Does it happen that we have parties where we don't? course right um especially with virtual parties when they flop but even when they flop we can still send out those book packages so having that automated as far as picking the date for me it's every monday that those messages get sent out and putting that in your calendar when are those messages when are those booking messages you know going out for virtual parties And maybe, you know, if it's a cooking show and you didn't, maybe didn't get them, you know, first of all, if it's a cooking show and you're having problems dating parties right then and there, right, then we should talk. Um, but if not, um, when are those booking calls going out to cooking show guests? So does anyone have a system down for that? I'm thinking another thing too that a system would be good for is you say that um, sending out these booking messages, a place where everybody, I know there's different messages out there for us to, you know, for different scenarios, but making sure that they're out there for people if they're wondering what it is to say, you know, as far as reaching out. I think that's a big problem when everybody wants to pick up the phone, they don't know what to say. And I found myself in that predicament at times. And, you know, I'm usually pretty good about picking it up and being able to find something to say because I always have something to say. But just having a place where they can go to get this. And I think that'll help create a better system for those that are struggling. So that is very good. That is a good idea. Um, so how do we implement something like that? Claudia? Yeah. Hey, how are you guys tonight? Um, what hey. if we're, I'm taking, sitting back and listening because obviously I need help. Um, but when I'm thinking about this and how we can help our teammates and stuff, is this maybe something we could work on in like 
I'm sorry I got on a few minutes late, so I might have missed this already, but maybe doing binders one night um, and putting stuff in there so they're familiar with it it's in their hands or looking at it. They can ask questions at one of our team meetings when we do this. You know, everybody bring a binder that's going to have these resources in it for us. And then when, you know, we could have them take a look at the papers and they can say, oh, like, I think it was the first time Donna came up, maybe, and we went around asking everybody about having a party, and it was, we had to get the, the 10 no's before we got the one yes, and how that made us feel comfortable, maybe something like that with a role playing kind of with the pampered chef, but maybe that could help the people that are struggling or the new people that, you know, that are coming on and, um, I don't know. They're just throwing those thoughts out there. I don't know what you guys think or if it's a queer thought or whatever, just tell me it's totally fine. So, um, so I, I do remember um, the the meeting activity. So, you know, basically we split people up and just said, okay, so ask this person about having a show. And it was very uncomfortable at first. Um, and then they got kind of a little bit more comfortable. I'm just wondering what kind of binder, like I, I'm, I guess maybe I'm not following what would be in that binder. Oh, I'm just thinking because we're talking about, um, I know it's being automated, but, you know, we do have some older people on the team, too, that they aren't comfortable doing a lot on computers and Facebook and um, all that stuff, and they're still learning computer systems. Well, it sounds funny, guys, but um, there's sometimes that it's, you know, there's, I'm just thinking if they had something that was in hand that they could go to. Um, you know how like you have a list of like ideas or things to say like Casey was talking about, like maybe a little scenario or something and they could see the wording right there, they could flip to it and I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Claudia, somewhere there's a little, is it a little blue book of bookings? Is that, I never went through it because I, every time I go to look for it, I can't find it. But would that be anything that would be helpful? I'm not sure if that pertains to. I think it could be, but I think, you know, I think you guys are, you know, I think you guys are worrying about new consultants right now. And I think this is more for you as far as what do you need as a leader to run your business automated so then we can focus on helping other people so does everybody on this call know what to say when they have to call and make bookings who stumbles raise your hand <laughs> okay. anyway. so i really like um karen smith she um this is for cooking shows and i'm sure that there's a way to tweak it for the virtual parties but she did that wish list and that wish list was her her in whenever somebody came to a checkout to to ask them about bookings and that to me is the step in the automated way as to where everybody at the party gets one of those those wish lists and when they come to you for checkout the wish list is in hand and you ask that questions i don't know how many times that i don't ask somebody at checkout because you're at the party and you're doing checkout and you it just totally goes over your head but if i had that in front of me and i can look down and say oh you want the stoneware did you know that this month it's 60 percent off i think something like that for cooking shows would really help me and i need to write that down so that i do it um, but so what I, if we what if we had something every month that Checklist. That's what I need. <laughs> well, Pampers have used to have something. I don't think it's still available, but every month when you saw the guests in the host special, they had this little like pep talk next to it that you could listen to or you could read the words and it would tell you what to say during that month to get bookings. So what if we had something where every month, um, maybe that could be like a post or something, every first of the month, um, here's how you could book, you know, three ways or whatever. And I mean, I don't know, we would have to co collaborate on this, but 
Um, here's some words that you could use to book parties, cooking shows this month, virtual parties this month. Um, but you know, I, maybe you could take the, like take the people who got the most bookings from the previous month and ask them, Hey, what did you say? And have them come up with, you know, have them help come up with words for the people who are struggling to get bookings from parties. Like, how Trish gets two bookings from every virtual party, I will never understand. Because, <laughs> but, um, just I like to, that idea. Yeah. I like it too. Because that way we're not like hearing from the same people all the time. Yeah. So, um, okay. So that could be something I could auto. The only problem is some people don't put their bookings in, right? So blah, 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 book to party. So it doesn't track right that like that person has the most booking some people don't even put them in um so that could be a little um but we could ask like even just the top sellers or something hey how did you get your shows last month what did you do can you pop on live and share do you mean they check bookings at like say tom had a show and then um my friend sheila booked off him and then that's where they check it is that what you're talking about where to track it yeah, obviously so yeah, so when we, you know, when you have a guest at a party and you put their order in, it says send newsletter, future party booked. If you click future party booked and you select the date, the system tracks it. Okay. Okay. Um, but you know, I think again, the the biggest thing is for you guys is to just somehow figure out if I don't have the shows that I want, do I know how to get them? or where to reach you know where to go to to somebody always draws on my screen every meeting <laughs> i don't, know how, to, I don't I even know how to do that um, my head. let me see if i can get rid of it i'm sorry <laughs> so um i did this this is um 20 ways to get bookings and i put this out to my team um and i i did a challenge and i said um the first person to send me a picture of 10 of them checked off gets, I don't I don't even say anything. I said, I just put it out as a challenge actually. But um, this was really nice for me to kind of visualize like, how can I add more parties? Um, I don't know how to automate it though. That's what I'm struggling with is. Well, I think the automation for bookings, right? So if you look at this, right? Host coaching, good show, selling skills, customer care, right? So if you have a booking and you coach your house and you become good at asking those questions at full service checkout and creating the excitement for people to want to have a party, then that's automated because you're so comfortable at your shows that, you know, you, you can get the bookings that you need and that you will never leave a party without asking people to book one. And if not, right, then the customer care is somehow automated where you keep following up with people and you keep checking in with people. So, you know, you might get bookings um, down the road. But the other thing I just thought about, what if we did like a, a bookings album or something on our team page, on our big team page, and every time someone like the 20 ideas to get bookings, boom, throw that in the album. Um, uh, here's a screenshot of the message I just sent out. Boom, throw it in the album. Because sometimes we might give people word choices and they're like, yeah, I don't feel like those, right? But they could scroll through there and just see what are people doing I don't know. How does it, is that something that we could do? I like that a lot. That's what I was kind of thinking of as when I was thinking of our new consultants and our other team members was having a folder with that type of stuff in it. So um, it gives oh, them the Trish, library. I was like, that sounded like Trish, but I can't <laughs> see you on my screen. I was like, oh, there she is. <laughs> I know. I can't see anybody else. I can only see you and then if somebody talks. But Well, I can take notes separately. Here you go. You guys don't have to see. Oh, notes. they're nice, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so okay so why don't we do that and then maybe we as the leaders can make an effort that every time we feel like we're sending out a booking message or like nikki those birthday messages right screenshot add it to that album right or put it in the comments or something um and that can always be i like that idea well i think it gives us like a library almost instead of us going back through multiple messages trying to Oh my God, I seen that somewhere, but I can't remember where it was. And we spend more time searching for this than we actually do picking up the phone and calling. So right. absolutely. 
So I think that could solve both problems, right? That could solve the problem for you as a leader. Shoot, I don't have the bookings that I want. What do I do? Um, and it could solve the problems of when people are, you know, you kind of have calls with people all the time. They're like, oh, I don't have shows. I don't have shows. I don't have shows. Now you can be like, okay, which two ideas are you going to try that are in this group? Right? So, um, okay. So I kind of think that pretty much solves the automation and bookings, knowing what you want, knowing when you want those shows, and then having some kind of resource for you to get there. But again, you should set some kind of deadline. Okay. So if it's, um, yeah, Nikki, can you post a message? Yes. Start an album. <laughs> Let's start the album. Yay. Um, so, um, I would also, you know, encourage you guys to set, it takes time, right, to have the calendar that you want. Let's just be honest, okay? This is not going to happen overnight. I know we all struggle with bookings, okay? But maybe set yourself like a deadline. So, um, you know, the rule of thumb is always by March 15th, our goal should be to have the next month, the next four weeks, the way we want them, right? Um, and it takes time because what happens is we kind of, you know, tend to fly of the seat of our pants but if we actually worked a little extra for a couple weeks we could have that overflow of show that could generate that automated business and i always think back to about three years ago when i was this close to earning a trip and i looked at my husband i was like if you want me to earn this freaking trip then i need to have like 15 shows and you need to babysit and watch your kids all the time so he's like sure go for it so i worked really hard for a week i contacted everyone i had like 15 or 16 shows that month it was my highest month yet i think um but that that one month of a ton of shows fed me for a long time right um so you know if you feel like maybe you are stuck just really just throwing it all out there and utilizing all resources, all contacts. Like I just went through all my past hosts here in the last three years, um, doing things like that. Right. And really making sure like, okay, I, I gave this my all. I reached out to all these people and we know that the results aren't immediate, but over time these people might respond. Or I had a lot of check back with me in the summer. Right. So you, you're going to generate business over time. Um, okay. So I think that helps with bookings. Does that I have help? a quick question. Yeah. So you said you went back to your hosts that were like three years mm -hmm. back. What did you say to somebody that you haven't reached out to in quite some time? So I, um, I ran a report for all my cooking shows over the last, since I moved here. So I knew they were local, obviously. Um, and I used, um, uh, I think uh, someone posted them on the Landy Leaders, uh, the words that Laura Antakal posted somewhere. Um, and it was basically... Hold on. It was like, I think I seen it. You see them, right? I think um, so. It was help Kimberly. I'm testing a new theme party, fast, fresh, weeknight meals to get feedback from my hosting customers on the recipes and planning materials. Would you be available for a party in April? I picked April because my March is done, but I will tell you, I sent out, I kept track. I sent out 60 texts. Um, I got 10, not right now, check back in with me in the summer. I got one, yes, um, which was a person that hosted a party and then, you know, I've been playing phone tag with her for, I think, over a year. Um, I got, and then I got another one checking her dates. That's all I got. And 50 people didn't respond. Okay, so I have the same response rate as you. I'm not magical, okay? Um, but I just keep going. One yes. Okay, good. Right, moving on. So, um, okay, so, and that could be a message, right? That could be added on to that booking side. So, host coaching. What can we do to have our host coaching when we have those parties that we want, right? So, what happens is we might have, all of a sudden, we have 8, 10, 12 parties, and we're like, shoot, I ain't got no time to host coach these people, right? So, what are you guys doing to have that automated? what are we doing to host coach you what know, are you doing to host coach where it's automated where you know this is what happens this is what i say oh well i i personally have it all saved in a word doc and um and i have it saved in my phone so if i'm laying in bed and don't feel like getting up i just i have it saved in my notes and i copy and paste and i send it in my group private message 
Um, but it's all the same thing. And then if I can see that my hosts aren't really doing it, because in mine, I always say, please respond done whenever you've done it. And if they haven't by the end of the day responded that they've completed it, I just send them a separate message and say, hey, don't forget to do your, you know, your tips for the day and it'll really help your party. And that's what I do. And then there's, um, there's a couple days, I think on Wednesday, um, is the day where I let them know what their totals are and remind them to sign into their account um, so they can check it themselves. So what so happens from the day days. someone books a party with you as far as host coaching before the party? Before the party on um, the day they book it, I mean, that's just done. And then on the Wednesday, the weekend before I mail the packet, I mail all my packets on Mondays, two weeks prior to the show. I send them each a separate private message, um, usually Saturday or Sunday before, just saying, hey, I'm mailing out your host packet on Monday. Thank you again for hosting. I really appreciate it. You'll get your catalogs, blah, blah, blah. And that way that gives them the opportunity to tell me whether or not they're not going to do it because I'm not going to waste postage. So if, as long as I don't hear back from them, if I do hear back from them, everything's great. Then I go ahead and mail them on Mondays. And then Thursdays is the day that I invite them to their party um, because all my pre-parties start on Friday. So Thursdays is the day I do that. So on every Wednesday, I send them a little video message or a private message saying, you know, Hey, just making sure you guys received your host packet. And um, I'm going to be setting up your parties tomorrow and inviting you to the event, make sure you invite all your friends and take a look at your host packet and let me know if you have any questions. And then Thursday is the day that I um, invite them as a co-host to their party and send them that first private message telling them that today's the day they need to invite all their friends, click, click that they're going and start inviting people. And then it just so goes- how do, you, how do you keep track of this? Like if you say, um, every Wednesday, this is what I do. How do you keep track of that? That you are doing this every Wednesday and that your Wednesday doesn't just go by and you're like, oh shoot, I almost forgot to do that. I, I am old school and I write it in my planner. In my planner every day. And like for instance, today it says, um, today sends, send video message to party starting 319. And then when I did that today, I checked it off. And then it also says send party number three to my 312 parties, party day three to 312 parties. So I know to send that message and then I just check it off. And I literally sit here and I write all of this stuff in my planner, but if I don't, I, I, I can't, it doesn't, I can't function. It doesn't happen, right? If it's yeah. not written down, it doesn't happen. And I'm sure it took a little bit of time to create something like that and stick to it until it's now a habit. You just know that's what you do on Wednesdays, right? Yep. So, yes, so this is why <laughs> Trish is so successful, right? Because she knows what she's doing when, right? You shouldn't be sending out host packets on a Monday and maybe next week on a Friday. Like, you know, for me, I go to the post office on Fridays because that's kind of like my semi day off. I don't really know what I do Fridays. Right. Um, but I know I'll be out and about and that's when I go drop the packets off. So that's why it's important for you to make something that's duplicatable, right? Um, and I, you know, I was just surrounded by so many virtual rock stars and they are like diligent. Like they're like, no, I can't hang out with you tonight. I, I got to check on my parties. Like they do not go to bed until they checked on their parties. Right. Um, versus even myself, I'd be like, oh shoot, it's been like a day since I checked in on the virtual party, but it's, it's having it right br broken down. And, um, you know, what happens host coaching, right? From the moment they book the party until that party closes, right? That's the system that you need to figure out for a virtual party and for a cooking party. Okay. I can share my systems with you guys. You know, I'm sure Trish can share hers. Um, but there, you know, should be some kind of system in place as far as do they get a packet at the show? You know, do you mail it to them if it's a virtual party? When do you set up those parties? When do they get a confirmation email? Um, so I can show you, um, oh, I don't have it on this computer. Never mind. Um, but I have, you know, I have these sticky notes on my computer that basically one is for a cooking show and one is for a catalog show. And it shows all the 150,000 steps that need to be checked off. Um, or I could show it from my calendar. that need to be checked off 
when someone books a cooking show and it might look tedious, but at least I don't forget anything and everything kind of gets checked off. And if you have a virtual calendar, you can move your virtual calendar around, you can repeat things. So if you're doing something and you know you're gonna do this every week, then repeat it for every week, right? Paper calendar, you don't have to do it yourself. Um, so I can, um, I can show you what it looks like for me. And I think, you know, if we just talk about it and you guys promise yourself that you will develop a system um, to be duplicatable, whether you have one show or 15 shows, right? Um, and it might even be easier to start with less parties, right? So, okay, so I'll just show you this real quick. Don't freak out, all right, it looks crazy. So I'm just warning you. Um, so for example, this with a Google Calendar, right? Um, you can create a calendar, right? And it just opens up and I can add, this is my checklist for a cooking show, right? I have a Google form that my, as soon as someone books a party or they says they want to book a party, I send them a Google form that they fill out. So I have all the information in one place. Like I said, if they don't even fill out the form, I know this party ain't happening, right? So I can post that. Um, did they get an email confirmation through Consultants Corner? Check. All that happens at the beginning. Did I create them on the website? Check. Do they have a packet? Check. Do I have their Facebook event? Do I have the post my party connected to the cooking show, right? Um, this is a confirmation message that I have saved in Evernote, just like Trish, so just copy and paste it, right? Um, and I sent these little host letters. When do they go out? And then basically, right, so let's say I set it all up and now it's time for a three-week message. That three-week message reminds them that I need to talk to them on the phone. It's the only time I talk to them. And if I don't send that message, I will never talk to them because I will forget. It'll be like, oh, shoot, her party is tomorrow. I hey, Claudia. Talked. Yeah. Is your power flickering? Um, I don't know. Is it? I don't know. Mine is. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> if you guys lose us, that might be why. Oh, my husband just left. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, if you lose me, just keep going. So anyway, some kind of checklist for you, right? And then this event moves on electronically. If you have a paper calendar, what I used to do when I had a paper calendar, the moment I booked a party, all the activities that had to happen with that party would get put in my paper calendar. Is it tedious? Yes, but it makes sure that you don't miss anything. Because again, right, host coaching is, is a board, right? So I'm sure Trisha's calendar looks like that with little to do things every day. All the red things are little check things to do every day and the same for virtual parties. So having some kind of automated system. What, does anyone else want to share that like, do you have something in place from the moment somebody books a party as far as host coaching goes? You know, that's funny. It's something I've been working on. You and I have went over the Google Calendar, and I, I do use that, maybe not quite in the same way that you do, but I also have a bit of Trish. I am very much a paper girl, so I do have my paper calendar where my shows, why are you laughing at me? My husband's laughing at me. So I circle the dates that I want to work, and I plug them in for each thing that I have to do that goes in my Google Calendar, so I get that notification. I get that bing. So I know, oh, I have to do something. Okay, so then I go ahead and do it. But I also have a three ring binder that I have the host information checklist, I think that Pampered Chef has. I go through that. I know a lot of it's repetitious, but it's something that helps keep me accountable for doing these things. And this is something I got lax on. I used to do it at the very beginning when I first started Pampered Chef. I was very on it at keeping track. And then all of a sudden it kind of just kind of slacked off and you know, then I noticed, like Nikki said, I forgot to mail out a host packet. And I'm going, oh my God, I had the host call me. She said, you were going to mail that out. And I'm like, um, yes, I did. I apologize, you know, and she wasn't angry about it, but I was discouraged myself because I completely forgot. Yeah, I've done that before. And I'm like, oh, you didn't get that? <laughs> well, let me go set you another way. <laughs> so, yeah, and, you know, I guess the other thing with host coaching, having it automated, is make your packets up for the quarter. You don't have to put the catalogs in it, but you can always pick, you can always order this month's special, you know, in the next, this month and the next two months. Um, how many shows do you want? And you guess what? You're going to make 12 packets a month. You're going to find those somebody to, that wants them because otherwise you wasted money, right? So that could be another, 
that could be another automated thing um making packets so whatever find a way whether it's paper i used to do paper now i'm all google right because i like to ding it reminds me ding 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 all day and if it's red right every day i start it's this giant red list and i just slowly check myself through it anyone else have any systems already in place or any ideas or anything you want to throw at us for host coaching and it, it's kind of like a crucial thing right so we want all those parties and then we end up getting overwhelmed because we have too many <laughs> right or we don't have enough so we cling to that one host like you gotta have a good party um so really promising ourselves that we have some kind of system in place to make these parties successful because we owe it to our hosts for them to have a successful party because if they have a 200 dollar party where nobody shows up or one person shows up they're not going to have another one again that was way too much work for them to go through that right um so okay so with, does does that help anyone kind of having and we can share all of our we can you know maybe start posting stuff in the bullet train or maybe having a folder there i don't know something like that um and then maybe you know if you have any systems just send them my way and i can maybe we can make this a big evernote for directors to figure out how to get their business um, automated. It's kind of what I'm thinking, something along those lines. Um, okay, automation for having a good show and selling skills. What can we do for that? What can we do for that? I think that falls back to your automation of host coaching because you're not gonna have a good show if you're not host coaching. Yeah. No good health coaching, no good show. <laughs> I think reaching out too um, to customers and if they're close to $75, pick up the phone, message somebody, say, hey, listen, you are one item off. Don't ever tell them they're like $4 off because that one item could be, oh my God, I really wanted, I don't know, the rock crock or something like that. So instead of going from a $4 sale, you go up to how many ever dollars for the item that they put in. And if it is a pair of salad choppers, you know, do dual, the dual sided cleaning brush. Hey, I use that all the time. It's really hard to clean, you know, grab one of those. They're only $4, you know, just adding those little things to make sure that you have a good show. I wish I could do that. Why can't you? Cause I'm in direct ship. Oh yeah. But at a show you can, right? Yeah. At a cooking, at a cooking show. Yeah, at a cooking show you can, right? Yeah. Yeah. I host I host coach all the time and I I follow do the same thing that Trish does. But like this past month and last month, none of my hosts even bothered to do anything. So then you might have to switch things up, right? So just because it works for one person doesn't mean it works for everyone, right? Um, so you might have to look at it. Okay, well, did I do it exactly the same way? Or um, was there something that was missing? Or what could I do to get my host excited? That's you, right? Yeah, they, like, they, would see my, them, right? So. they would see my messages and not reply. Or some, you know, one even said, oh, I'm just not into it. Like, so here's the key with virtual parties, okay? If we don't know why these people booked and what they're excited about and what's on their wish list, they are not going to do the million things that we message them every day to do. Because they're going to be like, uh, yeah, I didn't sign up for that. Right? So it's crucial that we have some kind of conversation, even if it's a, five, 10 minute call with them explaining that you are setting the expectation that, you know, what are, my first question is always, it's even with new consultants, what are you most excited about? And if they just say, oh, I don't know, I just booked it to help you and be like, well, that's great. However, I want to spoil you with a ton of free stuff. And the only way you're going to help me or the only way you're going to help your friend that you booked the party off is if we make this a successful party for all of us. So what are some items on your wish list that you would like to get for free? Because that's my goal. Right? Yeah. I mean, just put yourself in their shoes, right? So if I were to just sign up for something and then they were gonna put me in these groups and send me all these messages and I didn't even know what I would get out of it, I'd be like, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> you're crazy. Mm -hmm. But if we tell them that, 
we find that most of our, you know, just, you could even just make it up, right? Oh my gosh, I've had so many parties over the last year, hundreds of parties. And I find that when my hosts follow this outline, little tips that I give them, you know, then they will have a successful party. Can you do that? Can you follow those steps I send you every day? And I did pick up from Trish. So again, we're never done learning. I've never heard this before that she asked them, comment when you're done. Yeah, I've done that too. Because I bet you what happens is if you have six hosts in a group message and four of them go done, 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 the other two are like, oh, okay. I guess mm -hmm. I'll do it too. Well, that gives them a call to action and makes them accountable too. So, you know, yeah. even though they don't know those other people, they automatically look like, well, I guess I should be doing it if everybody else is. Yeah, I'm putting that on a sticky note right now to change my coaching. Um, the other thing I heard too is, um, I think it was Donna that said she tells them at the beginning that when they follow all her steps, she'll add a free gift to their order. Oh. All right. I was like, huh, I got to change my host coaches. I'll just change it for everyone. I'll just change the whole avenue. Um, so, okay. So good show selling. Um, no good host, no host coaching, no good show. Close to $75. Remind people, right? Um, I think for virtual parties, it's just, you know, make sure you're present, you're in there and again, automate it, right? Find a certain time that you maybe check in every day. If you're going to do these virtual parties, is it going to be in the morning? Is it going to be during nap time? Is it going to be in the evening? When are you going to check into those virtual parties? And another thing with that is make sure that they know those are the times that you check in because if they don't, and you're on all the time, they're going to call you out on that. Like, oh my God, you didn't answer this like right away. So if you're working, make sure that you tell them, I check them in the morning um, for 10 minutes during my lunch. And then in the evening before I go to bed, something like that. So they know that you're not on 24 seven to answer the questions. And it makes your job look a lot easier. Absolutely. All right. So, yeah. So when are you going to check into the virtual parties, putting that in your schedule? And, you know, if you do a lot of parties, even allow yourself to have a week off of parties to kind of catch up on stuff, right? Um, okay, automating recruiting. Or should we go to customer care first? That's a little easier. <laughs> automating recruiting. That's kind of interesting one, but I know what they're going with. Who wants to go share anything about that? Silence. Sorry, I'm trying to make dinner and do this at the same time. Um, that's your asking your host five times. That's a checklist. Make sure you're checking those off um, and asking your host five times. That one I feel comfortable with saying I follow that checklist. Um, but yeah, definitely ask that. And then another thing that I like to do at my cooking shows is there's always that one or two guests that are like really excited and really into it. And if you don't hone in on them, but I, like I had one lady who um, was really excited at my last party and she was like, she was cooking something else in the kitchen. I was like, Oh, Hey, you should use my skillet, you know, use my square um, executive skillet that comes in the kit and you could get it, you know, whenever you join. And she was just like, Oh, you're funny. And then she joined. So, you know, there's, there's opportunities there as long as you're looking for them. Yeah. So, um, I think for cooking shows, that would mean, right. We, we, you want to go into a cooking show, prepare for bookings and you want to go in your cooking show, prepare for recruit leads. So maybe having some kind of information packets ready to go. Right. Um, that you could, that you're prepared, you, you have it automated. You've made, 50 packets for the year, 100 packets, whatever, or whatever, for three months um, that you could hand out at your parties. Um, by the way, I posted the Zoom that Marna Ross did yesterday for our director people that are, you know, wanting to promote. I was glad I caught it because that lady has a lot of wisdom. So did anyone listen to it? It was amazing. I started it, but I got interrupted, so I need to finish it. But okay, yeah. so just like the first two minutes, uh -huh. right? I was like, well, sucked me right in. And I'm like, what does yeah. she have to say? <laughs> exactly. She's so, she does. I mean, I don't sugarcoat things, but she really doesn't sugarcoat things. So, um, 
yeah, I highly recommend you guys listen to her. Amazing. So, okay. So um, keeping your eye on those one or two guests at a party that, um, and I agree, I go in, I don't, I really, okay, I'm just going to be honest here. I don't care what I sell at a cooking show. I'm there to recruit people. Um, so I go in there, I ask everyone, but I have my, my focus goggles on. I like, there's people I like, there's people I think are awesome. There's people are going to join my team. <laughs> so, you know, go in there with like, Oh, I wonder who I'm going to connect with that, you know, could use this job. So, um, yeah, ask your host five times. That's a good one. Um, and I think for the virtual parties, you know, uh, I think Trish does that too. She writes down the people that are very active, those party rock stars. And then she writes down the people that ask questions and she reaches out to all of them saying, Hey, thank you so much for making the party great. Right. You're like my party rock star. Have you ever considered doing something like Pamper Chef? So, and I've changed my virtual party template like 12 times, but the one thing that has been consistent in there is I do 13 questions. Um, and it's kind of like the stealing hearts game, but for a virtual party. Mm -hmm. And it's literally just a graphic that says, ask me anything about the Pampered Chef business for a chance to win. And it says, you know, I say, um, you have to ask me something about the business, hosting, recruit, um, joining my team, uh, hosting a show or a product in particular. When we get to 13 questions, I will draw a winner and add a gift to your show. I've signed three people from the questions that they've asked on those in the last two months. So that, that is always included on my virtual parties. You know, I do this at my cooking shows. Why didn't I think of doing something like that at my virtual parties? Thanks for that. Always adding on. Yay. Um, yeah, so making sure we have, you know, some kind of Q&A. But I like how you set the expectation. Like, it's at a cooking show. I don't leave until you ask me 30 questions, right? Um, so that's very good. Um, Okay, so, and then keeping your eye out for, oh, Nikki's got to go. Okay. <laughs> um, keeping your eye out for those q and A'ers and those rock stars. And then what could we do with leads? So if we have, what could we automate if we, we all have those leads, right? That not right now, later, check back with me, not right now. Um, so what could we do with those potential recruit leads to have it automated? Make sure you put them on a list, especially if they're telling you not right now. So you have a place to go back to and not scratching your head like I did with Morgan. Like, oh my God, she was interested with the business and I completely forgot about her. So make sure you put it somewhere and that you refer back to it periodically. And then let's take it further, right? Put them on the calendar once a month. Yes, put them on the calendar once a month. Where that's your check-in with my recruit leads. Claudia, I still use your um, RSVP squares every month. So Yes, RSVP boards. Yay. Yeah, so keeping those leads in front of you, but even with that board, right, it, it would be great to like every first, I don't know, every first Monday of the month, you, because you have the special, the new sign-on special, you could check in with those people. Right? Something like that, where it's automated every, I mean, you could, if you have a paper calendar, you could highlight it for until the end of the year, right? Um, so, okay. So I think that's good for that. Um, and then the last one is customer care. What do you guys have automated for customer care? Doom, 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 doom. I have that three ring binder and I have the two by two by two calls in there. So once the show is over, it gets moved into the two by two by two and right on there, I have a little divider and it has exactly what to say. Somewhere there was a two by two by two thing that you had posted and I just went by that. So I call them and pretty much go over everything. And you know, at least I get in the first two calls, you know, sometimes I might miss out on the third one, but I always try to go back and, you know, touch base with them at some point. Yeah. So having some kind of system in place. Um, so I'm just going to share with you what I have. 
and I can post this if you want, or if you guys want. Um, so basically, right, so we all have those virtual ones, customer care, follow up, right? So one by two is basically the booking message, pretty much, right? Then two weeks later, um, you know, did you check? Did you, are you enjoying your products? Did you take them out of the box? Um, and two months later, I just kind of asked them if, you know, they, they're interested in some new recipes to just kind of open the door because if they don't respond to something like that, there's no reason to even go into, you know, this is the special for the month, blah, 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 right? Let's offer service first and then see if they respond. Um, the other thing I do too, um, this is mostly for, um, cooking shows, so, um, well, it's for virtual and cooking shows. So I probably don't use the virtual one anymore, but the cooking shows, I have a follow-up for the people that attended the party. And I have a follow-up for the people that placed an outside order because they're kind of separate, right? I don't want to kind of message them the same thing. Um, and then, you know, two by twos, two weeks, same thing. Just wanted to see, did you check them out? Did you check on your products, take them out of the box. Um, and then two months later, just asking them, you know, how are those products working for you? Do you need a new recipe? But the way it's automated is it goes into my checklist that I just showed you earlier. So um, here I can show you. Uh, share. Okay, so right, we have the cooking show checklist. So once the party's closed, right, then I will check. Did I, did I do the one by two? So um, the one by twos are, you know, the day after the party, two days after the party, depends on when the party is. And then um, once I completed those, I know I need to check in with them in two weeks. So I'll go in here, I'll edit it, right? So let's see, I, say I completed it, then I change the date and move it to exactly two weeks later and then it pops up on my calendar two weeks later and then when I did it on the 28th then I could you know I change it to whatever th two or three months later down the road so when I look at my calendar I know exactly what I need to do when so you could do that with your paper calendar right so cooking show Casey one by two fast forward two weeks cooking show Casey two by two three months later cooking show Casey three by two in a paper format. But again, it's having, it's the moment you book the party, having all those little steps on your calendar because otherwise they're not gonna, they're just not gonna get done, right? So you can kind of look here and this is like kind of what it could look like. Katie, cooking show, three by two. Gina, fundraiser, three by two. Christine, three by two. So I know what needs to be done. And after the three by two, they get moved to a six month rebook. So I'm always reaching out. Um, so actually, you know what we can add? One thing that I just started doing. So at the beginning of each month, so March, for example, I um, have an ongoing event every month on my calendar that says reach out to hosts from exactly a year ago. So I go in my consulting connection, I pull up March 2017, I look at everyone that hosts it, and I send them a message about, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's been a year, we have a new catalog, can I interest you in another show? So that's another automated booking process, right? Rebooking hosts from a year ago every month. Because they fall through the cracks, right? We forget to rebook them. So that's another um, thing that you can do. And you know what? Customer care, I mean, I've gotten so many bookings from following up with people and even the booking message where people are like, oh, not right now. Oh, no, thank you. And then I just say, okay, is this a not right now or no, never, lol. And they're like, oh, it's just not right now. And I was like, hey, can I check back in with you in the summer? And they're like, sure. And so I just booked a bunch of people because in the winter time it was, can I check back in with you in the spring? always asking for permission to follow up and this is the spring for me when the catalog comes out right so now i just booked a bunch of those people from parties from you you know months ago so the follow-up is crucial and if you don't have a lot of time figuring it out putting it in your calendar and saying okay maybe once a month on the first i do the one by the two by twos or something or the you know and then i don't know figure it out so it works for you and somehow is automated um, any other things for customer care? So 
So make it automated and know what to say so you can just copy and paste it. I think another thing is holding ourselves accountable and actually doing this. It's one thing to put it out there and yep. to start doing it, but it's another thing to stick with it and keep doing it. Yeah, and that's the hardest part. That is the hardest part is holding yourself accountable and knowing that this is going to grow your business and the time mm -hmm. you're investing to figure this out is, is, is going to grow your business. I mean, if you stick to it and not just do it for a week and then like, you know. And another thing is don't try to take all of it on at once. I mean, like you said, it's, it's a process. It's not going to happen overnight. It's something, pick one thing that you think would really help your business and do that. You know, and then once you get automated in that, move on to the next thing, you know, get good with one thing and then move on. Yeah. And it all goes back to your why, right? If this is like, Oh my gosh, this is so overwhelming. There's no way I'm doing all of this. Then your why isn't strong enough. But if your why is like, no, I want to change my business. I want to be consistent. I want to be successful consistently. Um, then I will find a way to make this work. And that's why you see people all the time that sell consistently because we got to pay the bills. <laughs> and, you know, I was just talking um, with a, the car sales guy today because I had to get my car in for inspection. And I was like, oh, it's winter rough, you know, to sell cars. And he's like, mm, you know, it's rough for some people, but I have consistent business. And I was like, you know what? That's kind of what we always say, right? We're always like, oh, January is a tough month and the summers are tough. But there's really not such a thing as a tough month when you have a consistent business. Do you have to work some months harder than others? Yeah, of course, right? But like March, it's like an easy month, right? Because we have the new catalogs, everybody's excited, right? Um, January, everybody's coming out of the right dead zone, too much sugar during the holidays. But again, if we know that it's important to us, we will find a way. And that's the only way, you know, um, I, I would never right? Teach this to a new consultant, right? But for someone that wants to be successful consistently, like you guys are as directors and above, this should definitely be, you know, this just kind of hit home to me. I was like, that's why we're struggling or some people are struggling because we want to help our team, but then we're like, oh, well, I just spent, you know, two hours helping her. And then this other person wanted something. And here I am still having called my host to coach them. And we're letting our, our person, you, I mean, you know what I started doing too is like I um, my morning time is pretty much me and my personal team and then I, I start doing calls in the afternoon or vice versa because otherwise I will never get anything done <laughs> right um, so you gotta make yourself time and you gotta be off for your team too and just be like hey I, I need to get my booking calls I need to do my house coaching calls you know let's talk tomorrow or whatever but make sure that you put your personal business um, on the biggest priority list. Even as executive leaders and above, our biggest mistake is to let our personal business fall. And I've been there, I've done that, and it's not fun. <laughs> so, um, okay, anything else to automate it? I mean, we're like past an hour, so I didn't know if anyone else has anything. Was that helpful? Any feedback? Any, I don't know, just tell me what you're thinking. I think you gave me a good place to start. That's for sure. Yeah. And you're like a growing leader, right? So having the base, right? Going back to base camp and having the base figured out. Any other feedback? Jody, how are you feeling? Better. I got some great ideas and I just need to, like Casey said, make myself accountable and just organize and just organize it so it's better for me, I guess. Yeah. And one of the things that Marna Ross said on this call that was very interesting to me, you know, she's six years old. They have a big family. She was like, you know, we've had weddings, we've had graduations, we had birthday parties, we had deaths, we had celebrations. And she's like, you know what? But through all those family times, right? Casey's shaking. You've heard it. Um, she was like, I've always, done my business consistently because at a regular job we can just say I don't feel like working today because my kid has a birthday party next week or um, I can't work right now because my daughter's getting married this summer or uh, you know like it's making this business a priority 
um, and working it consistently and not not giving yourself all the excuses. And all we all do it. There's times where I'm like, I'm tired. I just want to go to bed. <laughs> well, with Kayla going to college, you know, that was my excuse. And I let stuff go downhill. Now I'm paying for it. So now I'm trying to build back up from where I was. And stuff does happen, you know, and you've got to push through it. And sometimes it gives you that outlet, you know, and something to focus on when things go bad too. So, you know, working it from that aspect as well. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, even when things go bad, I just go work, <laughs> right? It keeps you like focused. Um, yeah. And it's how you, you know, how you overcome those struggles that's going to make you successful. We all have them guys. We all have our own struggles, right? But we know at the end of the day that we want a consistent business um, as a leader with Stanford staff. So, all right, well, I will stop the recording.